Hello everybody, Bulldozer Investing. Today is December 12, 2020. We like to analyze the market and what happened this week. Before we begin, I like to conclude that this is for educational purposes only. I'm not here to solicitate or give financial advising. So let's begin. Market was a little shaky this week. We thought it was going to go up forever and it didn't. Um, I guess investors were kind of spoiled um, thinking that you know we're gonna run forever it doesn't work out that way things don't work out that way so let's go ahead and see what happened in the market let's look at the spy now we're on one note that I like to mention this is 30 minutes but it was a perfect uh, you know descending triangle here descending wedge and it just broke out um, we have a huge resistance for next week around th uh, 367, 368 area. I think what I think is that if there's pumping uh, on futures, we might just start Monday above 368 and see what how the market reacts. That's what I'm thinking. And um, to this next upcoming week is going to be a recovery week. I would say that we're probably going to close 375 by Christmas um, and how I came up with that is basically a fib level on the high and the low today um, high of yesterday and low of today but we can do a little bit of retracement we can do something like this And I know some traders are saying 382 as well. I don't think it's going to get that high, but this fib could work as well as we can see bounces back and forth. But I really like to take it up to here and say we will go to 372. So it really depends what you how you want to um, you know look at it. Um, this could also work because we see the fib bounces on the um, 6180 ratio and 374 which is which is what I think I had previously without the retracement so if we do re without the retracement just a regular fib on the high and the low thing it's at 374 375 so expect that range I'd say there is a trend line here so expect that range 372 to 374 these two areas we've been seeing 375 at max by Christmas I'm being conservative now people are you know some people out there are saying 382 I've been hearing that a lot uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go that far okay um, however what I can say is that as I mentioned in the previous video um, that Monday futures might start just to beat that psychological level of you know 368 we might start above I don't know some news might hit something might happen and the futures might you know blast through 68 I don't know if we do see continuation lower I'd say 362 is the next support okay? um, let's go ahead and look at Palantir. That is by far one of my favorite stocks. Um, stocks is a company, actually. I love the company. I like the technology. I do see a support level, as we said um, yesterday. I called almost the bottom. I said that we will see support at 2610. That was dead on, right? As we can see, the lowest point is 2608. That's pretty darn close. Okay, this is a 30 minute chart, by the way. I could go for an hour, which will look more cleaner. Um, I'm not going for a daily on this stock because it is an IPO. Um, max I'll go is four hours. Since it's an IPO, there's not much to really work around with. Um, <clears throat> however, what I really, really like is this support. We don't want to lose it. The next fall. If it breaks 2553, that's where I probably exit it. 
okay I'm not saying like for by one cent but if it, it you know I'll, I'll exit I'll exit from here and maybe buy from 23 23.50 somewhere around there. I'm not leaving the stock but it's just that sometimes you have to know where to cut the loss so for example today mentioned the other day on the video if we get a spike up sell it which I did right here I think I got it at 28.11 try to sell it at the top but I think I got filled I wasn't fast enough got filled at 28.11 okay where did I buy it well did I listen to myself on the video no should I have yes okay where, what did I do with this one one second I keep deleting my drawings. Okay. Nice support here on the 27, uh, low 27s, and we keep getting like 26 90s, 27, 26 uh, 97. We've been going on and off in that area. There's a good support. Um, as you can see, we hit that 2810, which I was talking about. Anything above 28, you can sell. 29 definite sell for the day trading. Um, and I and I said that's where you sell now that's where you buy uh, where do you buy and this was yesterday I think we were talking about where do we buy it I said the support was at 26 I think it's because we had the cloud Ichimoku cloud I took that off let me put that back in clearly see there's a resistance here on the Ichimoku cloud as well but I think I found the bottom of the cloud yesterday on the hourly was sitting at 26 um, 18 okay so I said it, it might drop right at the bottom of here so 26 10 like right around here the cloud like right around here I see some you know technical bounces here here um, support like right around here it's pretty good so I thought that you know the cloud saying that it's 2619 let's go a little bit lower and say you know 2610 it was pretty accurate it was pretty accurate on actually um, I was judging it by here actually this is today's candles but I was looking at here um, and I said you know around here it would be a great support and which it did so it, it didn't it didn't disappoint us the support was there bulls are in full control the hourly MACD looks delicious I'd say that we're probably going to test the upper channel 29. Okay, so let's delete this fib and let's look at where where are we going. That's that's the next question. Of course, we're not fortune telling here. We're just speaking on technical terms. It happens, it happens. Um, stock stocks this week was very technical low volume trading but everything was spot on technical with fib retracements um i think we're waiting for the news the stimulus package if that comes market is going to fly guys um yeah clear resistance at 27.35 no doubt about it i think we will test the lines of 28 and 2831 so the, actually th this and the cloud top is matching I'd say that's a pretty big resistance let my my best wish is that let me do one thing I hate I hate putting this on the right side but we have to do it we have to do it because it can't read it so um, 2889 is my target of sell when I say sell sell 50% of my position maybe 30% I don't know I, it depends on what I feel that day and then I'd probably buy to see where we can get support if we get that high our support would be right around 2743 so if I sell at 28 2889 2850 around there probably buy back around the dollar range okay um, in the longer term so we're speaking uh, Monday right Monday we're definitely gonna test 28 if we break I'm going to sell at 28.87, buy back maybe around noon, maybe around that breathe time, like when, when it just like, you know, relaxes, gets loose, something like this happens, probably collect it right there. 
So same thing, we get up to 28.94, which I think 28 is of a stronger resistance, but if we do break 28, it'll be like, if we break it really fast, we'll probably touch 28.94 and that's where I'll sell. But if we slowly, like just grind it, I think we're just gonna blast through. Anything you see like a fast spike, I'd probably sell in cash out. This market is very technical, guys. Spike up to 28, higher than 28 instantly in the morning, I'll sell. And just buy it back later. Um, that's the shorter term. Now, where do we go longer term? We will, and, and by no means, I'm bullish. I, I'm going to admit that I'm bullish on the stock. Um, 37 is my range here probably by the end of the 18th is an interesting date i think what did they call it like a quad um first of all the 18th i think they extended the talks of the uh package stimulus package um till the 18th okay and then the monthly expiration of options on the 18th so i don't know how the market is going to react i mean we're estimating higher on the spy uh, we did say we'll probably bounce back at you know by Christmas 375 maximum. So we're good. we're definitely going to do 368 uh, early week next week. So on that note, if we do get up there and Palantir follows the market, we're probably testing this upper upper uh, um, channel of the wedge, and that would be 61.82977. I'd sell and wait. So that's what I'm going to do. So buy end of next week if we see 2977 I will not be surprised and I will be a seller there and since the market is very technical what I'm going to say is if we do get to 2977 so let's delete this and say this is our actually I don't want to draw the rich I probably want to draw this one 2977. Can't get exact 77. I would be a buyer at 2746. So this is my estimation. My educated mathematical guess. We will actually I'm take that back. Okay. So we will probably test this level, bounce back, and if, if the week goes great, we'll either shoot up. So around this range. Okay, that's where I'm selling. Wh what did we say? 27, no, 29.77. So this range right here. Okay, that's where I will sell. Maybe we'll test the top of the channel, and it's been pretty damn accurate. Okay, so and then if it goes down, I will be a buyer. With, and this is this is very neat actually that the top of the channel is sitting at where the fib levels we were talking about and the 6180 the golden ratio right here is at the bottom of the channel which is very interesting okay um, and I wouldn't be surprised if the market reacts this way because we have low volume waiting for news and the market is very technical so for Palantir um, I mean I'd sell by the time we get up there I probably sell like quarters quarters of my position maybe I'll sell the full position right around here and wait for a retracement now if we do get back blow out never chase it because it tends to come back okay um, that's what I've been experiencing in my trading is that whenever you blow out you probably come back to test it then go okay so if you know if we get a crazy week next week it would be 3350 which again will not surprise me because that is the all-time high so put put a note i'd say the first level will test okay um next week will definitely will be um our friday session high 28 30s 28 26 well let me see it 28 25 was the high so we'll test that first okay um we might come back and we'll definitely test this area which is around 29.36 that's probably I sell half my position there so quarter here half here probably go out full around 29.77 okay and wait breaks out fine 
because it'll come back and that's where I'll be a buyer again okay but if it if it doesn't break out and bounces back it'll probably test 61.8 level bouncing back to 2746 now it is dangerous I'm not I'm not gonna go full position here because if it breaks down it'll probably see um, the bottom of the cloud which is around 2615 again which has been a good support okay so watch for those levels write it down um, educational purposes only I'm not telling you to buy or sell what I'm telling you what I will do and I'm not asking you guys to follow me or anything okay? just giving you ideas and just showing you how I come up with these numbers okay? all right so that's volunteer um, let's take a look at Apple Apple it, I'm bullish on it I've been bullish since uh, this support right here okay I bought I bought the stock around here um, sold it bought it sold it bought it I mean I, I should have waited um, bought it around this huge support uh, 61.8 sold it at 61.8 and you know I bought it at 61.8 back because I saw the support and then I bought actually I didn't buy the stock back here I bought options okay so I lost a I actually I was up 100% on my options I sold it and went higher so I bought like 125 for December 24th and I said it would be 125 and just like huge upbreak and I made like 100% on those and with I, the mistake I did was I should have only played with the house money on that certain option play I went in with the full money the the profit and the original investment on that I went in and bought the 130 24s and that's when the that that's when things come down um, average it down sold it around here reason why I sold it down there is very simple okay Let's do some math 61.8 23 okay right around here I sold the options waited for a drop and where did I think it would have went through again the, the easiest way to play this is just do the extent you can do the extension if you want to by something like this okay you know you see this 120 area okay let's zoom in perfect support so I I um, I got in at the 50 and then I I doubled my position on that option when I say these guys I, I don't really like gamble on options uh, I probably like maximum I'll pay for an option is one thousand okay. dollars um, for my account size that's I mean I'm not saying like, I have a huge account or anything don't get me wrong it's just that for my account size it's reasonable um, I'm only playing like instead of investing 100k or 50k and look for that you know 5% or to get 5k um, and I need like I, if I'm investing other positions and I don't want to put 100k 50k on my Apple then I probably you know risk that option and say you know I'm willing to lose 1000 and that's how I play that option uh, perfect perfect right here you see this bounce what I did is just for educational purposes pick the high here I could have picked it here too that's fine um, but I like I like to either like I don't really go for the highest spike that wick but I rather go for that solid bar like right here okay that's usually where you'll get your you know accurate reading um, and I don't have too much position so what I did is on this loss even though I you know this came back I I was at a 20 25 percent loss on that option I sold it so to recover that loss I bought it here net net um, I'm a little up but I still haven't recovered yet I am on the 130 to 24s um, and my range of estimation would be right here Mar if market picks up which I think it will and if we go into that 272 uh, spy going to 272 
uh, I'm sorry, not 272. I'm <laughs> like months of months way back. That was that. Um, I meant to say 372. Um, then Apple will definitely because it's been a lagging. Like it's been lagging for months. Okay, we've been in this range for months, and the MACD looks on the hourly. It looks sweet. Um, on the daily, um, on the daily, it doesn't look as much. Well, yeah, I'm sorry. My MACD was zoomed out really too much. Let's do auto. Okay. Since we shortened the term, so the drawings are going to look very messy because we did talk about 30 minute charts, one hour charts on the daily. It looks a little confusing. So to take that time back, so let's, I, what I like to do is go like this. Now, 100%, it, 100 percent, 100% fib level 132. I did say that I was expecting like around 130, 132. Um, it it is indicating that level on Apple. Okay, um, a time range. I would say. Oop, my bad. Yeah, by December 20th, uh, no, 23rd. So before Christmas, yeah. That's what I thought. That's what I said. Um, if if we do, if SPY runs up to 372, 375 by Christmas, Apple will be around 132, according to the FIB levels. Okay. So that's where I look for. I'm not, to, again, I'm not giving you guys any ideas to go buy options or play the same options as I do. Um, I am invested in Palantir. Um, a bit more than what I would have liked. I got too excited. I did consolidate, sold sold it with profit today, and then bought it back lows. It did even dip lower than what I bought, even though I said that you know it'll dip to 26.10. I didn't even listen to my own words. Sometimes I get caught up and don't remember. I delete my drawings and then don't remember. I started picking it up at 26.90 levels, and I just kept like averaging down. Uh, Net net, I'm zero percent on today's buys because I kept averaging. Overall, I'm at a pretty good position with Palantir, and I'm hoping that you know it'll get to 43 levels. For Apple, I think I'm seeking to make at least 200 percent on the options. If it does get there, um, well, if it does get there, meaning that I'm not going to wait till like my estimation of time range. I said by you know 23rd. Uh, 32 bucks if we do pick up and if we do see 20 125 126 probably gonna sell those options I never wait till the last day I don't care if it runs up or not like I messed up on Disney this week I waited waited and it just didn't happen and I sold it and today boom okay had the 160 calls on that uh, um, but it's okay no worries okay so like the plate safe so probably if we see 125 126 um, like a, and we need that momentum maybe Monday like we get a huge run up at least the 125 if we open with like 2% or something on Apple probably make good money off of it and sell it okay. but if you're a stockholder I my estimation for the summertime is 180 that's a huge bullish call but I am bullish on Apple everything is higher than its previous highs right now all these stocks um, and I think there was a sector shift on the Russell and the Dow. Um, now the um, you know vaccine news are over. I think people are going to come out of Boeing's and SPRs or all those like airplane companies and airline companies, cruises, and I think they're going to come back to the sec uh, the the big tech sectors. You know your Facebooks, um, Apple's, Netflix, Nvidia's, Amazon. Um, so forth okay now I do like to touch up Tesla Neo and other you know EV sector um, I am not shorting Tesla that is something stupid to do okay however I weighted my risks on Tesla if it runs up okay if it does run up I don't know if this was the one that I yeah, if it does run up, that's pretty much what I'm guessing, like around 720. And my risk reward, 
I'd rather wait because I think it's not worth it at all. Um, let me do one more thing. Yeah. So if we do run up, I'm guessing like 700s right around there. If it does go super bullish on the 21st or something, like you get a 20%, okay? I just don't feel that. Like I, I feel like if it drops, it'll if it drops around like the bottom cloud or even here, like I, I just don't see the risk of going into Tesla anymore. I did go 434 and then sold it um, at around, I sold it a little early around like 530s probably like you know once it broke the all-time high that's where I said like okay we're reaching the fib levels I sold it but it I should have waited uh, for the pitchfork 50% uh, but it's okay I mean it's never a mistake to take your profit and leave okay stocks like Tesla you never know what happens now where would where would it fall from here is I would say I, I would be a buyer around 499 like 500 uh, or to 450s okay now this box that I drew for my you know, own sake just to remind myself cloud cloud support okay if the cloud support comes around this line right here um, I'll buy it it'll probably pick up again okay but this MACD on the daily needs to relax okay so Tesla net net i'll wait i'll wait i'm not gonna buy any strangles or anything play options on it too expensive anyways it's like back then you know tesla options were always expensive but at least cheaper than the stock now the stock is cheaper the options are more expensive so i'll, I'll wait i'll wait on tesla no rush okay sometimes you'll make more money by waiting because if you were to come in here and then you lose you lose money i'd rather have no gains then lose so that's a gain okay. um, and I what also gets me here is that it to me it's curving up I don't know what will happen on the 21st but if it does it'll just go like this and then eventually drop okay that's my that's my forecast I might be wrong I know there's like lots of Tesla fans out there I'm not against the stock I'm not you know bullish on it either currently short term long term i think it's a 900 dollar stock okay if you want to buy it right here fine but just i wouldn't go 100 percent position i'll just buy in you know steps buy you know maybe 10 percent here 10 percent here 10 percent here i'll be fully invested around here just wait for that 900 bucks okay but not right now okay not right now All right, so go to Neo. <sighs> Neo, Neo, Neo. I am not a buyer at this point. I am not convinced. Although the volume and the drop, the volume is drying up. Like it, it might, you know, people might be, you know, it might be a consolidation phase. It's just that I can't tell where it's going. I can tell where it's going down. I'll be a net buyer around 30 to 23 range. Just drawing this box for future references. So the cloud really doesn't say it's bearish. Um, MACD, the internals are definitely resting. Okay, um, It's not a bearish stock. It's just that, I mean... I was trading this thing at like 355, 10, 16, around here, blew out, here and there, you know, small money. I'm kind of ashamed that I should have just kept it. Some stocks you just own and just leave it, but um, that's Apple's, Amazon's, uh, Facebook's. It's not Neo. It's just that sometimes like we had that marijuana stock surge back in the days and it just like Tilray, you know, going crazy and stuff like that. Um, I think EV sector lived through that. Um, it, I'm not saying it's going to crash like marijuana stocks because I think uh, we're here, EV sector is here for the future. Um, 
yeah so here is a critical thing like for neo i'd wait to see if it if the 40 holds if it doesn't then i would not invest till this area now if it bounces back okay where like for the bulls if it bounces back i am i am seeing a couple areas that i would be planning um 100% fib 59 for the longer term for the shorter term there's definitely a resistance at the 50 fib is 48 bucks so if you're going you know i'd probably buy like a 500 dollar option for 50 bucks a month out maybe the you know january uh 15 2021s but i wouldn't go like 20k 30k investment at this point until until I get a confirmation in the internals, until maybe like the cloud, you know, the cloud is supporting it for a good amount of time. As you can see that you know, the levels, the channel that I drew, it's also coinciding with the the cloud. I want to see the support for some time, kind of like how Tesla did that long wedge, and I want to see the breakout confirmation that I'll go in. Okay, this is not something because you know when thing goes really hot and fast the drop also is the same way okay um watch out there i mean i i wouldn't risk any ev sector here but for one thing though i mean if you're a technical trader what gets better than this besides the fact that we'll have to wait for the macd but um on the four hours the macd looks a lot better and in the four hours it did break out of the wedge now we have a risk here might hit back and get a support at 467 4067 okay obviously the bottom of the cloud and the 50 percent fib retracement is a big resistance and it did try that today just got rejected okay um for this stock if you are a buyer just go in slowly and just try to do cost average and maybe do stops if you don't want to risk it but this looks pretty sweet and promising i you know out of the ev sector i like this chart i don't know too much about the company i think alibaba is invested in this company um, but i wouldn't i wouldn't be too excited or put too much money just just to do a technical trade very tight stops okay big c okay now this is a junior this is what i call a junior shopify okay um nice support here if it breaks down it'll go to 65 okay now as the support th this is the, we're at the bottom of the cloud it did try the top of the cloud it, the cloud is turning green i like the company okay i like the fact that it's doing business with facebook and instagram okay that's one thing now I, my prediction is a little bullish here you know you're gonna say how this is like almost you know 80 90 percent from 72 to 120 that's like nearly 70 to 80 percent so why why would i come up with this i didn't even draw a fib right now right so this is the only reason i like this i like this site for a couple things i'm not like a you know elite member or anything but i just like to check one thing guys you'll be shocked 34 percent 34 i'm sorry 34 million 34.6 million shares on the market which is near which is like half basically of how many total shares there and 32.9 short float this will be bigger than a tesla squeeze it'll be like if we get like news like amazon started working like th this this run here was purely on the netflix um i'm not i'm sorry not netflix facebook and instagram news okay if we get some sort of news holy moly guys this will even like we might even go to all-time high i'm not like i'm not like putting a lot of money in this i'm just putting like very small maybe like point half a percent of my portfolio just for and the macd is not there yet but um we'll see if it breaks the cloud um but this is just 
I just want to try my look on this one. Okay. I'm not even like gonna like I can draw trend lines and everything, but if the short gets squeezed, forget the trend line. Okay. Forget the trend line if the short gets squeezed in this. My short term target would be around 83, 84. Okay. But my long term target would for this one, it's a solid company. I, and I'm not looking at valuations anymore, guys. The market is not your grandpa's market anymore. It's not Warren Buffet's market anymore. Te it runs on technical. Nobody, nobody looks at the valuation until we get a crash, and then people are like, "Oh, oh, we were overvalued." Well, you got QE, Fed pumping money, dollars devaluating, and then you get close to zero percent interest where the heck are people going to put their money in? either gold or market okay so you're going to get the bubble for the next two three years okay regardless let's get back to our topic um uh, big c again this is my like short squeeze play get like a spike something like this um we'll see what happens okay uh, sdgr this company i really like bill gates has shares in this one i think he's invested in this company now, what can get better than this, guys? Double bottom, higher low, and we get the flag. Let's do daily. I think, uh, I'm sorry, I did hourly. On the daily, this thing looks even more sweet. Um, yeah, the, it could get, it could stay overbought, but look at this beauty. Double bottom. Consolidation, flagging, and try to break above. It did, it did have a resistance here, right? Um, so we'll see what happens, but if it comes back and I get a discount at 62, I'll buy it. And my, if it, if it goes up higher, where would it go? I would say at the top of the cloud, which is near eighty dollars seventy nine eighty dollars that's where i would go and the previous the, this gap right here anyway so let's let's do this let's put our target and let's put our buy range i'm a buyer here and a seller here okay. um and, and actually it might even come down and crash to the cloud like if it does that oh i that's a good opportunity guys if it does that if it goes here that's a good opportunity um this would be something like it reminded me of noax so it broke the cloud and then it got like right in the cloud and it just jumped back huge two two good days this thing was like from 110 to 128. That's pretty good. Um, Novavax is on a consolidation here. I would say that if it does come down 100 bucks, it's a buy. I got a long-term target of 250 on this one. If it happens, it's kind of a gamble play, but it it would be it would be something like a you know mini cup and handle here and just shoot up. We'll see. Okay, we'll see how that goes. Besides the fact that I've traded this around three three dollars and eighty cents, three ninety at the bottom, and I sold it around fifteen, and then it got up to twenty six forty. I I am I've got it right here on the squeeze. I purchased it, got out too early at the highs, so I've got it around forty five. Sold it at sixty one, but it just kept shooting. Sometimes you just can't guess, guys. Sometimes you just you know act reasonable. Market is unreasonable. Um, sometimes you just let go of the house money and let it ride, but I pocket them. When I get a profit, I pocket it. I don't care. Okay. Yeah. So my estimation of Novavax comes down 100, 101. I'm a buyer there. Okay. Got out of a topic. I, I wasn't actually planning to do Novavax, but, um, other than that, let me double check if I have to go over something else. I went over Apple, Palantir, Big C, Tesla, Neo, XPEV, and SDGR. We went over SPY. I think that's about it. It's been over 40 minutes. It was a long review. Um, wish everybody a profitable trading week next week, and let's hope the market just picks up, um, shoots up to 
375 for before Christmas. Okay, that's our goal. Good luck, everybody. Again, um, educational purposes only. Um, do your own diligence and do your own risk analysis before investing. Thank you, everybody.